Hello, my name is Jacob Wittenberg, and I'd like to welcome you to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. Today's session will be an overview of Trimble's GPS Pathfinder Office Export Utility. I'll discuss what types of files can be exported, supported export formats, then I will give you a walkthrough of creating an export setup, defining the properties of the export file, and how to run the export. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the types of files that can be exported. First are SSF files. These are in Trimble's standard storage format. They are used in GPS Pathfinder Office. It's the most common type of data file used with this software. Next are .cor files, or corrected data files. When you differentially correct a data file in GPS Pathfinder Office, the software will generate you a corrected data file. Last, you can export imported files. These are data files with a .imp extension that were created using the Pathfinder import utility. These could have been created from an MDB file, a DXF, or even shapefile data. Next, let's look at supported export formats. GPS Pathfinder Office supports many different types of exports, including AutoCAD DXF files, ESRI shape files, KML files for Google Earth, as well as Access MDB. As you can see, there's many different types of files supported here. This is one of the great strengths of GPS Pathfinder Office. With Pathfinder Office open, Let's take a look at the export process. You can access the export utility by the icon in your toolbar on the left, or go to Utilities and Export. On the Export Setup main screen, you can browse to the files that you want to export. Go ahead and click on Browse. Select the files you'd like to export, and then click Open. You can select multiple files at once. It'll just add them to the queue. Then we'll need to select our output folder. By default, it's going to go to whatever project folder you currently have open in Pathfinder Office. You can modify this by clicking Browse. And last, we'll need to choose an export setup type. The software comes with many different types of sample configurations out of the box. However, keep in mind that the sample export setups may not be defined to match your existing database or GIS. Because of this, you should create a new export to define your export settings. To create a new export setup, go ahead and click on New. Then choose a new setup type and give it a name. In this example, I'm going to use an ESRI shapefile. Once you've chosen your setup and given it a name, click OK. The export process is very similar for any of the export types you've chosen, whether you've chosen a DXF file, shapefile, or even a configurable ASCII to export there are six main configuration windows that will define and filter your export setup for all of these exports. This will include a tab for data, output, attributes, units, position filter, and coordinate system. Let's go ahead and run through the options in these tabs. We'll start with data. Choose the type of data that you want to export. You can include all features, which will include all of the data in the file. You can also select only new and updated features, updated features only. These other options make it easy to do data maintenance if you are updating existing information in the field. You can also opt to export not in feature positions, 
These include positions that are collected between features. If your file contains GNSS positions, but no features, you would want to use the Positions Only option. You can also export other records in the files, such as uninterpreted sensor records, meaning record sensors that were not collected as attributes to a feature type. Starting Feature ID lets you define what number the feature ID begins with. As you can see, the shapefile setup does not support this, so it's grayed out. Other export setups may support this option. Next, let's take a look at the Output tab. On the Output tab, you can select how you want the export to create your files and where to store them. The first option allows you to combine all input files to create a single output file that is stored in the output folder we previously learned about on the main setup screen. The second option allows you to combine all input files to create a single output file that is stored in an auto-generated subfolder. It will automatically create this subfolder in whatever output folder you have designated previously on the main setup screen. The third option uses the input file names to create files of the same name. So whatever your output folder is, it's going to create output files of the same name. Last, you can have the export utility create subfolders inside the project folder for each input file. Last, we have the system file format. This is defined by the type of operating system and or program the export files are used with. In many cases, you may find that this does not directly, directly reflect the operating system installed on your PC, but don't worry. Typically, this is predefined for you in the correct manner required to open in your software. Next, let's look at the Attributes tab. On the Attributes tab, you can select how the menu attribute values will be exported. For a standard data dictionary that does not include code values, you will want to check the attribute value. If you've created a data dictionary that includes code values, then you will want to choose from the following three options accordingly. Next, you can also include any generated attributes to your export. These generated attributes are exported in your file immediately after any other ordinary attributes from your data dictionary. As you can see, there are some that are for all feature types, point features, line features, and area features. Select the ones you want, and let's look at the Units tab. Under the Units tab, you can choose to define the export units by selecting the Use Export Units option. Click Change to modify this information. Or, to export using the current display units, currently being used in GPS Pathfinder Office software at the time of export. It's up to you which option you'd like to use. You can also modify the decimal places, latitude and longitude format, and date and time options as needed. Let's take a look at the Position Filter tab. On the Position Filter tab, you can filter based upon minimum satellite geometry, maximum PDOP, and maximum HDOP. Knowing that we need four satellites to get an accurate GNSS position, in most instances, it's beneficial to set the Minimum Geometry tab to 3D four more measurements at a minimum. If you are exporting uncorrected data, you can filter by PDOP and HDOP as needed. However, if you are exporting a differentially corrected file and use the smart settings in the setup, the software has typically provided you with the best solution available, so you can generally leave this set on any. This next group of options filters positions based upon their correction status. If you are exporting an uncorrected SSF file, you will need to ensure that you have the Include Positions That Are Uncorrected box checked. The last thing we will cover on this tab is exporting non-GNSS positions. 
You can check this box to include features that have no GNSS positions. This is handy if you were able to collect attribute information about a feature, but were unable to collect a GNSS position. Let's look at the coordinate system tab. Here you can choose to define the export coordinate system, or use the current GPS Pathfinder Office display coordinate system currently being used at the time of export. Also, you can define whether you want to export two-dimensional or three-dimensional coordinates, if your selected export format supports it. Because I've chosen the shapefile setup for my example, I have the option to assign a projection file. Please note that this field is only available if you are exporting a shapefile. You can leave this blank and use one of the export options above. However, you will receive a notification when exporting that no projection file has been found. This is because GPS Pathfinder Office does not use projection files to define its coordinate system and reference frame like ESRI's ArcGIS software. To use the projection file option, you will need to browse to an existing PRJ file that contains the correct reference frame for your GIS. If you select a PRJ file, it will override either of the above coordinate system options and use the coordinate system information defined in the PRJ file. Again, this third option is only available if you are exporting a shapefile. This covers the six main export tabs. For each export setup type, you will have one last export tab that is specific to the type of export you have selected. Again, in this example, I'm exporting a shapefile. So this tab reflects those options. If I was exporting a DXF or KML file for Google Earth, it would be specific to that export. Define your parameters as needed, and then click OK. Once back on the main export setup screen, double check to make sure the coordinate system, zone, and datum are set up correctly. Then click OK to start the export setup. Here you see the error message I spoke about earlier because I did not assign a projection file. Once completed, it'll give you a report and you can click close. Now I'll open the output folder that I designated in the export setup menu and view my exported files. As you can see, it exported each feature layer as its own shapefile layer. There will always be a text file that can contains a detailed log of the export, as you're viewing here. There's also an INF file that defines the export setup and the settings that you used. You should now have a good foundation of how the export utility works and be able to export to any supported format you require. This concludes Frontier Precision's Tech Talk on GPS Pathfinder Office's Export Overview. We hope you found this video beneficial and will join us again next time. Thanks.